Sawyer, wake up! My uncle screamed from the door. I groaned and rolled over. 7.23 a.m. Jesus, what was with these people? Come on, won't the losers sleep in, Sawyer? You've got a big day ahead of you. I groaned and rolled out of bed, grabbing a new shirt on my way out. Who needs to bother changing pants? Jesus, Sawyer, is that seriously what you're wearing? From what you told me I'll be doing, I didn't get the vibe first impressions mattered too much. I said, barely half asleep. It had been a long night. Everything matters, Sawyer. If we're actually going to turn you into something useful and not, whatever this is, everything you do needs to be 100% all the time. All right, all right. Give me a minute. You know, I'm actually really glad you're here with us, Sawyer. I think you'll learn a lot from us. A lot about hunting people? Yes, but not what I meant, Sawyer. I mean how to be a man. To be a real man. Look at you. You wouldn't be here if there wasn't something wrong. I didn't reply to the obvious insult on my character. Truthfully, I'd never thought I'd end up working here. The resort was something everyone in my family knew about. We even vacationed here a few times since my dad's brothers had opened it. It was almost never talked about, though. Just that dark family secret that kept us all in luxury. Just the way the world rolled. You've got a soft heart, Sawyer, he said. And believe me, it's not all a bad thing. We've got to watch out for each other as a family, first and foremost. But you can't let that make you weak, Sawyer. That's why I think this job is perfect for you. I was shown to a large room. On the table near the far wall were several monitors connected to a simple keyboard. A fancy-ass chair placed in front of it. My new chair. In the middle of the room was a man, tied, blindfolded, and gagged. He looked like he was absolutely shitting himself. I was frozen for a moment, like the reality of this was all just hitting me. My uncle slapped me hard on the shoulder. You know what to do. Just call security when you're done and they'll take him to his cell. Five more after him and then you can play with the drones for a bit. And don't worry, Sawyer. We'll break you soon enough. With a smile, he left. The man before me stank of piss and sweat. He looked timid, helpless. It looked as though they hadn't even fed him properly on this shipment. Or maybe he just didn't eat. I could hear pleading moans through the rag cutting into his mouth. I approached the man, removing his blindfold and gag, taking my first look into those big, terrified eyes. Listen to me very carefully. I said, you've wound up in a very bad situation, and if you want to get out, you need to pay attention to everything I tell you. I thought about my first day on the job as I drove through the now blackened forest. Of course, that idiot hadn't made it. Only one out of the six in his group had. Still, he had more spark to him than this complete fucking moron Jerry. I drove silently through the woods, occasionally checking my tablet to make sure neither our guest nor Jerry had moved. I smiled to myself as I drove. This dumb idiot has no idea what I was about to do to him. I pulled up silently next to the sleeping Jer Bear. My gator had been specifically designed for stealth driving. Not that it mattered. Jerry had drank himself nearly a liter of rum in barely five minutes. That was a survival feat all on its own. Out of my pocket, I pulled out a nice sized bag of cocaine. Too pure for his blood, but whatever. I held open his mouth and dumped a good little pile in it. Can't have you crashing on me right away, Jerry. I carefully poured most of what was left into a straw, shoved it up his nose, and blew. Jerry! Jerry, calm the fuck down, Jerry, I yelled as I drove after him, 
Jerry was taking off faster than that fucker should have been able to run. Screaming all the way to fucking add to it. Jerry, you're going the wrong way, Jerry. The safe point is to the left. To the left, Jerry. In my earpiece, I could hear Vanessa laughing her ass off. She had the microphone on on purpose, I swear. Jerry was completely inconsolable. Whatever I'd done to his brain, it was running on pure primal instinct. He'd practically be feral if it wasn't still that little bitch who ran away the second he laid eyes on me. Suddenly, I heard a roar. Something came crashing through the trees to the right. Oh shit, it's a bear. The big brown behemoth practically knocked over the surrounding trees as it came into view. Its eyes were right on Jerry. Jerry froze. Normally this would warrant a scolding, but in this situation, it was better than him running away. Okay, Jerry. I tried to say firmly, but not too aggressively. I didn't want that thing to suddenly turn on me. Technically, I'm not allowed to physically interfere with this, so whatever you do, don't run away. The bear stood up on its hind legs and let loose another roar. This fucker looked like he was ten feet tall. I looked over to Jerry. I could literally feel that adrenaline coming off that drunken, coked up body of his. Hell, I think I could actually smell it. He was going to fucking bolt. Your girlfriend's pregnant, Jerry! I shouted. He got his attention. He slowly turned his head to me wide-eyed. I think the dumbass actually forgot there was a bear for a second. That's why you're being hunted. You knocked her up, and Granddaddy didn't like that. He's going to kill it if you don't win this, Jerry. So for the love of fuck, don't run away from that fucking bear. Jerry was still. Silent. He looked down at the ground, eyes open as wide as they could be, grinding his teeth now. He was sweating. It was probably all the cocaine. The bear's front legs pounded down onto the ground. It started to move for Jerry. Suddenly, Jerry let out one of the most terrifying sounds I've ever heard. I had heard that sound a few times before during the hunt. It still shook me though, every time I heard it. I know well that weird shit happens when people revert to the animalistic side of their brain. But most humans should not be able to sound like that. Jerry fucking roared at the bear. The bear stopped completely in his tracks. Then, Jerry lunged forward. That fucking idiot actually ran right at the goddamn bear. I was about to yell at him again, but the bear ran for it. It sprinted away as fast as it could. And that little bun of a tail was practically up its ass it went so far between its legs. In all the years out in our reserve... I'll bet it never had that happen to it before. Holy shit, Jerry. Holy fucking shit. I yelled, grinning widely. Jerry Bear, I never thought you had it in you. Holy shit, okay, look, Jerry, I have to go now. But you still have a while before you come down from that blow. Now, just keep moving south while Granddaddy is asleep and... Jerry? Jerry, what are you... Oh shit, Jerry! I cranked the gator to reverse and canned it. Jerry was coming right for me. Jerry! Jerry, if you burn all your energy now, you'll crash harder, Jerry. Jerry! It was like he was goddamn Superman. I was constantly twisting my head, trying not to back into a tree while still keeping an eye on him. Fuck. And I left my pistol at the lodge. I hit his shocker. He twitched for a second and then came at me even angrier than before. I wasn't even sure how it was possible. Jerry, my job is to help you, Jerry. That's what I've been doing all this time. Don't kill the help, Jerry. Jerry skidded to a halt. Good, Jerry. You knew. All this time, and you never told me? He said. You gotta save your trump cards for when you need them, Jerry. I said, admittedly with a slightly nervous grin. It's gotta be a fun hunt, Jerry. Gotta have you at your best so that... Hey, wait, 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 wait. He started moving for me again, but stopped. 
I supposed if I really had to, I could run him over with the gator. But it would ruin what our guests paid for. Not a good look for us. Listen, you're on a hell of a lot of cocaine right now. If you direct that energy towards getting to the safe point before Pappy shoots your kid wakes up in the morning, you can make it, Jerry. He's just on the river right now. So you can make it, Jerry. You see the little dipper, Jerry? I said, pointing to the sky. Just keep heading away from the tail end and... Did you say he's asleep? Jerry interrupted. Ah, well, I suppose I did. And he's down by the river. Fuck, I'm not supposed to give him hints like that. So, Jerry said, if I just follow those stars, I could end this all tonight. Why is this idiot suddenly acting smart? The star on the end of the tail. I can't give a recommendation on that, Jerry, but if that's how you want to play this, it's your game. Jerry smiled. For the first time, I saw him smile. All right, then. He went to leave. Hey, one more thing, I said. I pulled what was left of the coke out of my pocket. I was going to save it for when I got back, but nah, fuck it. I stuck my finger in the bag and quickly wiped it on my tongue. You're going to crash sooner or later, Jerry. Take this. I tossed him the bag of blow. It lasts longer if you ingest it, so don't waste it by putting it up your nose. I never go out of my way for any other prey like this, Jerry, so don't blow this. If you do, your new nickname is Jerry Jer Banks. With that, I drove off. I could hear Vanessa laughing in my earpiece again. Did you seriously just get chased around the woods by that idiot? She hooted. Vanessa, I said. Shut the fuck up. 1.57 a.m. I'm back at the lodge over a freshly prepared bowl of popcorn. I watched in anticipation as Jerry slowly approached our guest's tent. Listen, Jerry Bear, I said in between handfuls of sweet buttery corn. I really think you should think about this for a minute. Like, don't get me wrong. Big improvement from you overall, mm. but like, you've basically got a rock in your hand. He has a shotgun, Jerry. Just something to think about. Jerry said nothing. Probably not going to risk alerting the guest. I watched as he slowly inched his way towards the tent. Lying next to the flat was our guest's point of stick. More like a spear if I were to give it justice. Six feet in length, made from Indonesian ironwood, the end carved to a perfect tip. Jerry grabbed it. I hope he doesn't try to throw this one. Slowly but surely, Jerry began to unzip the flap to the tent. Just as he had it halfway open, he suddenly dashed to the right. Then the front half of the tent exploded. Our guest was awake. My guess is Jerry had heard him pump the shotgun. Jerry circled the tent quickly, spear in hand, rocking the other. If he could get a lucky shot, he could put that spear right through the tent and into our guest. Then the back of the tent burst open. Jerry quickly retreated to the dense bush on the forest's edge, as the two remaining sides of the tent were shot out. I zoomed in on our guest's monitor. Through the skeleton of the tent, I could see our guest quickly putting rounds into the gun. Three shots and he would need to reload. I zoomed out to see the distance between his tent and the ATV, where his bow and remaining munitions were stored. It was about 20 meters away, next to the trail Jerry had originally left. Would Jerry think to go for it, I wondered? I couldn't see Jerry with either drone. His tracking device, however, showed me he was still, just past the confines of the tree line. He had concealed himself well. Our guest slowly moved from the tent. He was sidestepping to the ATV, never taking his eyes and gun away from the dark woods. A rock came flying from the darkness. He moved just in time. He quickly turned his gun to its origin and fired. A new rock came flying, this time from a new angle. It made contact with his shoulder. He stammered back but lifted his gun and fired again. He stood there, 
still for a moment, not daring to move. Then a pine cone came flying at him and hit him square in the nose. He yelled, lifted one hand to his face in pain, before quickly returning it to his gun. He didn't shoot this time though, just one round left. Then, from the ATV, I saw Jerry's head pop up and hurl another rock. Our guest spotted him too. He quickly dodged the flying projectile and with his gun pointed at Jerry, fired his last shot. Jerry quickly ducked behind the ATV, shot obliterated the back wheel and a good chunk of the body. Hey Van, can you deduct the tent and the ATV from our guest's damage deposit? Actually, add the bow to that too. Damn thing looks like a pile of splinters. I said, not taking my eyes off the screen. Fuck that! She retorted, bringing a handful of her own popcorn to her mouth. I'm not missing any of this shit. Fine, fine. It can wait. Just don't forget after we watch Jerry slip and fall on that spear. On the monitors, our guest had reached into his pocket and pulled out a new round. He quickly tried to load it into the gun, but Jerry hurled yet another rock hitting him in the chest, causing him to fall and drop the gun with his shot. Jerry now knew he was empty. Jerry walked around the wrecked ATV and our guest picked his gun and stood. He now held the gun at the barrel end, ready to swing the handle. From his belt hung his last weapon, a large steel hunting knife, ideal for gutting the prey after the hunt, and also as a last resort. The two just stared at each other for a moment. Both had pure fury in their eyes. Our guest, fumed with the burning hatred that this thing he considered much lesser than him, had fornicated with his daughter and bred with his daughter. This thing he considered far beneath him, that was to be hunted for pure pleasure, was now daring to challenge him. Jerry, now burned with the knowledge that this man was hunting him, tried to kill him just for the crime of loving his daughter. Jerry had the knowledge that if he failed, this man would destroy the last remaining piece of that love, his unborn child. Jerry also had a hell of a lot of cocaine. Me and Vanessa both watched intensely through mouthfuls of popcorn. Remember, Jerry, I said in the microphone, still not taking my eyes off the screens. Jer Jer Banks. Jerry lunged forward, thrusting his spear at our guest. Our guest, holding the gun in both hands, swung at Jerry. The two weapons collided, the gun knocking the spear out of the way. Jerry had the advantage with the length of his weapon. He thrust it again and again, our guest deflecting the blows, knocking it away each time. Being made of ironwood, he would never be able to break it, but he could knock it from Jerry's hands. Jerry took a few steps back and charged forward. The old man swung his gun, once again before he could be pierced, knocking the spear out of the way. This time though, after deflecting the spear, he quickly lunged for Jerry, swinging for his head. Jerry quickly raised the spear up and blocked his swing, then forcefully kicked our guest square in the stomach. The old man fell over, dropping his gun. Jerry came forward, his spear ready to strike. Before he could attack, our guest whipped a rock at him, nailing Jerry in the eye. Quickly, our guest picked himself up, grabbing an armful of rocks. He retreated backwards, continuing to pelt Jerry. Jerry aimed his spear at him and threw. Oh, for fuck's sake, Jerry. This man really had never been anywhere near a javelin in his life. It began to fly towards our guest while twirling in midair. Somehow, the middle part still made contact with his nose. Gave Jerry a second, though. A second he took to run at him and tackle him to the ground. Our guest grabbed the knife from his belt. He thrust it for Jerry's neck, but Jerry caught the hand. All four hands came to the knife, each one pushing. Jerry, pathetic as he was, had youth, and also cocaine on his side. He pushed the knife away from him, so it began to pry it from the old man's hands. Then... I saw our guest drop one of his hands. It went to his pocket, to his radio. He quickly brought it to his mouth. End it, Sawyer, he yelled. I want him dead. After all that, 
He just wanted me to end it for him. Of course he did. He was the guest after all. Jerry was never really supposed to win. I didn't have a choice, of course. Quickly, I switched off the safety on Jerry's shocker and held the trigger. He felt it. He was still somewhat numb, but I could see that he felt it. He was so close, though. He wasn't ready to give up yet. He kept fighting, ripping away at our guest's fingers on the knife. But as I held my finger down on the shocker, that shock slowly turned into an unbearable burn. Jerry screamed out in anguish, dropping the knife he'd been seconds from claiming. Our guest pushed him off and began pelting his face, yelling obscenities at him. You stupid fucking mongrel. I'm going to make her eat a piece of you after you're aged. I'm going to make her taste it. Did Sawyer tell her what I'm going to do to that abomination you put in her, Jerry? Even without his radio, the sheer volume of his yelling was enough for the drones to pick it up. I pressed the button on Jerry's microphone to say something. I'm not sure what. I ended up just removing my finger. There was no point anymore. I simply just watched as our guest grabbed his spear and then brought it down through Jerry's heart. I removed my headset and sat up. Can you handle the cleanup and wake up the chef? I asked Vanessa. I feel like I'm about done for today. She nodded, giving me an odd look. Oh, Sawyer, one more thing, she said. There's a new book in for next week. Read it over when you get the chance. This one's really crazy, like, I'm not sure how it's even got approved. I just nodded and made my way out. Of course it got approved. If they pay, and whatever the hell it was, it got approved. Just the way the world rolls. Greetings, friends and fiends. Chronicler here. We here at Creepy Spaghetti would like to thank Sawyer the Satist for allowing us to tell their story. If you enjoyed this story, be sure to subscribe to stay updated on these terrible tales. And be sure to check out the author in the links below. If you're interested in having your story narrated, be sure to reach out to our social media. As we continue our journey to pull the darkest stories from the infinite depths of the internet. Until next time, fiends.